Well, Les, thanks for joining me today. I wanted to just talk to you for a few minutes about your newest release that just uh, was debuted last night, Cessationist. And, and the question I want to ask first is, what was it that made you want to tackle this subject? This is controversial. There are, there are lots of, we would say, good men who are going to disagree with some of the points you're making. So, so why did you want to take this on? So I was actually brought onto the project a little bit later. Um, my two partners, Tim and David, they had they came to a G3, they shot some footage, and they asked me if I was interested in working on a film uh, about cessationism. Um, I've been a cessationist for a long time, but it's kind of like all my heroes are cessationists, mm -hmm. and I'm a Presbyterian, a PCA Presbyterian. Um, so I just was a cessationist by default. Right. And it obviously made sense to me that these things that are happening aren't real. But uh, I wasn't really that invested. But uh, once they sent me some footage to look at and I cut together a trailer, I sort of fell in love with the, the, what they were doing, the project and the content and the, uh, the message. So um, yeah, I just, I've learned a lot through this process and uh, why it's so important. And um, so yeah, I, I was definitely brought in later, but I'm so glad I was. So, you know, the Lord just sort of drop this in my lap as a blessing in my life and hopefully a blessing to the church. So you said you weren't terribly invested in the idea, you just took it for granted that you were a cessationist, but you became obviously more invested and, and you said you learned a number of things. So what were some of the things that struck you? What were some of the things that you learned or, or why is it that you became more invested in really making the case for cessationism? So I guess I always saw it as sort of a silly thing that's going on in the church that um, it's just a very unserious kind of Christian experience. That's the way I sort of viewed it. Um, but the more I dug into it, I realized that it's actually really dangerous. It's undercutting the gospel. It's undercutting the work of the Holy Spirit. It's just undercutting really every aspect of Christianity. And at the end of the day, it really is because of the practices that these people are doing, like you're practicing a different religion some weird gnostic magic like i'm able to do miracles and it's just like this is not the normative christian experience that the reformed uh tradition would teach you to to follow at all um and you know as you say in the movie it's not biblical at all either um so that's you know i just i care i love theology i love uh fighting for the truth so once I really saw the dangers behind what's going on, uh, I just I just saw it as a mission that you know this really does need to happen and happen in a good way that uh, convinces people. Were there arguments for cessationism that you had either not encountered or not really reckoned with, even though you were convinced going in? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, what were really some of all those? of it? Really all, you know. Uh, it's, I guess, there, there's like very foundational, foundational things uh, about even just the church. So like, I'd never thought through too much about even what an apostle really is, you know? Uh, it's, it's just not something I really studied all that much and how special those men were. Um, and so just working through that was like, wow. I, like, I, I really get it more than I ever have before. Um, and that foundational period and what it really means for the canon to close and just just all of those those basic concepts that most people who studied cessationism really get it's just not something that, that really sunk down deep with me um, so even now like I'll, I'll read my new testament and i i'm seeing it in a different light every time paul mentions that he's an apostle it's like wow that means a lot more to me now right. than it did before so just just very simple things like that um, have made a big difference you can see why the Apostle Paul goes to such great lengths to prove his apostleship to the Corinthian church because exactly. that was a huge deal in terms of his revelatory authority uh, in their life. Now, when you, were, when you were making this, when you were filming it, editing it, putting it together, were, there, were you aiming it at people who are unconvinced, people who maybe are in a charismatic church or a continuationist situation, or were you thinking more along the lines of bolstering the confidence of those who are more or less like yourself, already convinced? I think the best you can do in a situation like mine for this film is sort of uh, aim for the people on the fence. So people that are mostly reformed leaning, mm -hmm. 
and maybe they're just not really sure if these gifts, like, you know, somebody who would love John Piper, for example. Um, And we talk about Piper in the movie, um, and we're trying to be gracious and gentle, but we also have to say that we truly believe he's wrong, and he's doing something wrong, he's teaching something wrong. Um, So if you can kind of get people there, because then you you can only lay so much uh, groundwork to get somebody to the arguments that you're going to make. And so I sort of have to take for granted that you know, people think Sola Scriptura is probably right and, you know, important. Um, so, yeah, reformed leaning, uh, people... Bible people. Yeah. Right. Exactly. But then, you know, you think that through. And so John Piper is one of those people that loves the Bible, clearly. Right. But somehow he ends up uh, convinced that speaking in tongues is the tongues of angels. It's like, yeah, so it's, right. it's tricky. Well, I wanted to ask you a little bit more about that because you've done stuff in the past where where you've interviewed John Piper and he's been a significant, influential, positive figure in, in your work in the past. How, how difficult was it to take an honest look at men whom you and, and many of us really revere? So I think that was, we pretty early on decided that that was super important. That, had to do it. That, yeah, it just had to be done. Um, because it's it's one thing for you know Calvinistic guys to like attack the charismatic low-hanging fruit crazies of the world like that's easy Um, but I think it's way more important to actually engage with the good arguments the smart guys the you know the respected guys Um, and John Piper is certainly one of those so in my movie Calvinist sort of the the peak moment of the movie is the is John Calvin or I'm sorry John Piper uh, you know, he like he really unleashed this stuff onto the young restless and reform movement. It was so awesome and so big. Um, so he's a hero in, in Calvinist. And now in this movie, I'm I'm sort of throwing him under the bus. I'm I'm attacking him a little bit uh, because some of the things that he's well, everything that he's teaching around the charismatic thing uh, is just problematic. And the fact that he should be a gatekeeper for truth and all those things, and then he's actually sort of giving credence to this this charismatic, reformed charismatic movement. Um, so it just, had, it just had to be done. Um, and I don't really have too many qualms about it just because I care about truth like John Piper taught me to, you know? Right, right. So two more questions, Les. First of all, I know it just was premiered last night here at G3. What's been the reception so far? What's been the feedback? Well, I'm at a conference that's all cessationists and uh, they're all very kind people. So nobody's told me that it's a terrible movie yet. Yet. Um, so it's all been very good. You made a good movie. That seems to be the overall, the overall. Uh, when you saw it, did you, uh, are you happy with how it turned out? I, I am, I am. Uh, there's, you know, just the artist's mind being in a room with, it was like 3,000, 4,000 people, it was so many people. Hollywood premieres don't get that many people in one room. So it's, it was kind of like, you know, like everything that I, feel was weak about the movie is just like amplified in my mind anxiety but um, no it was it was an amazing uh, experience to be able to show it to that many people that are like-minded and and want this kind of content uh, so yeah I, I couldn't be happier with, with with all that so I hate to ask this but I'm gonna end with this question I know it's only day one of the reception of cessationist but what's next so we're going to make a study series out of the content in Cessationist. So that, that'll be coming out soon. Um, I love, my heart and soul is to make theological documentaries. Um, entertaining, enjoyable documentaries that are just elevating good theology and the glory of God. So that's what I really want to do. Um, the Sovereignty of God is a movie I really want to make. Like if you can imagine the way people hand out the Sovereignty of God by A.W. Pink, if you could do that like as a DVD, and it was, it's just like this super fun, like, uh, but also, you know, just powerful movie. I think that would be amazing. Um, the Trinity also is a, a passion project I really want to really make. So I, we don't have anything nailed down, but I, yeah, those are the kinds of things that I want to do soon. Well, Les, we appreciate your work on Cessationists. It's always great to work with you. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Yeah.